So who are you? I'm David McLean. I'm uh, one of the two candidates for the Newport Independence Party standing for the Stowhill Ward. Right. So you drew the short straw. <laughs> no, actually, I think I've drawn the, the most interesting straw of the lot. To okay. Be I mean, uh, the, the reason why I'm standing in the Stowhill Ward is simply because my professional background is in city centre development and business and retail and those kind of issues. And I've got a lot of experience working with business improvement districts and the like. And I think my knowledge is, is needed in the Stowhill Ward. So uh, chomping at the bit, to be honest. Sounds good. So um, what is your role, for those who don't know you? My role? I'm a PR consultant. I have been for, oh crikey, 15 years. Before that I was a journalist. Before that I was a steel worker. I worked in some of the local steel works, went back to university, got a degree, came out and changed my life. So that's what I do. But within that role, PR consultant, and before that I was working in uh, with retail associations and the like. I've you know it all adds to help sort of building knowledge of a lot of different things you work with a lot of different organizations a lot of different businesses Mm. and it all helps you've got quite a long title for newport independence party haven't you what's that because i can't remember it's something like environmental oh, uh, have I? or something. <laughs> no, no. Apparently. Well, I don't, I don't know if that is actually my title. I suppose, okay. yes, we haven't really officially worked those things out. Right, okay. Because the party, the reason why I'm standing with the Newport Independence, just to give you a bit of background, I did stand at the general election, the last general election for the Green Party over in Newport East, which is something i very proud I did, but I didn't enjoy it at all. So when I was asked to stand for council, I really was not in love with the idea and I and I, I looked for as many reasons not to do it and since I've done it I think it's I've had so much pleasure out of this campaign however it turns out I, I believe we have made a difference but the important thing is I've uh, these are a really committed passionate group of people who've become friends and I couldn't have wanted to to have met a better group of people and I think that, that you know for the city they are the right group of people to take things forward for those who don't know it's it's um it's a party of people from different parties, isn't it? Forming one party. Uh, well, 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 no, actually, it's just a group of people. So some of us have, like, like I've got a little bit of a pol- political background in the <laughs> studio of general election. And you've got some councillors who are uh, people who have been councillors. They're not officially now, of course, because uh, their terms are finished. So there's three of those. Um, and then everybody else is are just people from the community. Some of them have never had any political uh, inclinations at all, but they feel driven to do this. And that's, that's what's at the heart of the party. There's no, there's no uh, like careerism and there's no, um, what's the word, there's some kind of gang mentality of party membership. It's, it's a wide, broad scope of people across the political divide with a wide, broad scope of experience. And they're very, very real people. And, 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 and their heart's in the right place. So they are people from the community. Sorry. <laughs> so do you not feel that um, you need a political background to be in a party? No, no, I don't, I don't believe so at all. S- certainly not for local politics. And our, we, we don't have a, a, a core ideology like Labour or Conservatives or, or Liberal Democrats. What we do have is a shared belief that local communities need local lead solutions to their specific problems and you can't have a one size fits all solution to the problems so for instance Alterine Ward and Stowhill Ward right next to each other they have completely different requirements with regards things like waste management or crime so one policy doesn't work somebody's going to lose out somebody's going to be oversubscribed or whatever you need those local solutions for the local issues and that's what this is about well I, sorry you, I, what was the question that you Oh, you've detracted. I've detracted. I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. I'm going off on one. Yes. Oh, it's political background. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, Do you need a political no, background? No. So you don't need a political <laughs> background. What you just need is passion and belief that you can do better. And the idea that the one mantra that we all share is that there is no ideology other than local representation, the local people. So we don't sit there and argue about global politics. We don't argue about national politics. We don't even really get into those issues. We talk about the issues that matter in the separate wards that we work for. Mm. And I think that is what needs to be what needs to happen with local authority politics. You need to sweep the idea of national politics out of the way because it just does not make sense. It's not logical that Westminster is telling Stowhill Ward how it should be policed, or whatever it would be. You know, you need 
specific local solutions for local problems. They are very different things. I think local elections, you vote for the person, don't you? Hopefully. General elections, you vote for the party. That's how it should be. Uh, well, I would say, well, actually, well, that's a difficult one, actually. I, okay. I'd say that you should, even nationally, when you're voting for your MP, you should vote for the person who you think is best going to represent your constituency. Right. I mean, it yeah. is difficult. You do have to think about, well, you know, what is the... The overall party yeah, the view policies. on yeah defence or whatever it would be, so that's, that is a bit more difficult. It's, it is it's, it's less straightforward than local level. Local level, you should be voting for the person who you think will best look after your particular interest in the house you live in or the business that you run. Do you know what? I think when it comes down to even people, uh, I think you even see that with David Cameron. I mean, I don't think many people would vote for the likes of David Cameron and Osborne, mm. but with Theresa May, she has a huge favorability. So it's interesting mm. that people do actually look at the people who are in power of that party, mm. um, even on a local level. I mean, because uh, we were at the Hustings event, because um, we're watching the debate, and it seems that a lot of the all the politicians there, to be honest, seemed quite comfortable, like, familiar with the people that they were answering a lot of the questions to. At the recent Hestons, do Yeah, the one at the university. Mm. Um, I mean, it, it seemed that a lot of the people also in the audience kind of knew who they were directing. Well, I, to be honest, you know, I've done Hestings in the general election and they're not comfortable things, they're not pleasant things to do. However, I do think... And I'm not alone in thinking this. I know other people have mentioned this. It, it was a particularly nasty and ugly hustings, and I think we saw a lot of uh, a lot of kind of outdated, sort of ugly politics. That some of the audience. I mean, for anyone who wasn't there, it was a case of you know parties would shout down and stamp and clap, and and so that opposing views weren't listened to and if that's democracy in Newport then we really are stuck you know mm. Mm. So. it was it was interesting actually because um, we even had uh, one of our volunteers here um, who said that they were actually quite appalled by how yeah. Labour were acting that they were yeah. actually quite shocked that they even voted for Labour for the yeah. past uh, few years well I didn't want to point the finger or maybe I should do but yes it was it was like the, the problem with Labour in Newport it feels like it's gone back to what Labour was in the 1970s and that's a lot of the problem with the political uh, the political parties in Newport. You've got Labour who are reverting to the kind of their mode that they had in the 1970s. You've got the Tories who are going back to the 1980s. And it's 2017. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We live in a different world. You need a different way of thinking. You need different attitudes, different solutions. You can't go back to that kind of nonsense that we saw at the Hastings of people shouting each other down. You know, that's just, that's nothing, nothing to mm -hmm. be proud of. But you have a few people who are ex-Labour, yes. so do you not worry that perhaps then there are certain tendencies from what we saw with Labour at the Hustings in NIP? I can't see. No, like I said, they're, they're, they're a great group of people. Their hearts are in the right places and they're just not of that mentality. So no, I don't think, you know, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm an ex-Green, I'm not going to go around hugging trees. I'm very much into my car or whatever, you know, and, and you know, you... Your, your, pr your previous political allegiances if you change you know it's not football you're not you're not kind of obliged to follow a certain political party all your life although a lot of people do because you get this nonsense about well i vote labor because my father voted labor and his father before him well it's not a football team you're allowed to change your team you know it's a different world now you're allowed to to change mm, that's a good point everyone's got different opinions mm. um tr backtracking a bit you said okay. you used to be with green yes why did you leave if you did. Uh, okay, uh, why did I leave? Um, well, uh, okay, well, that was that's part of the reason why I'm happy to stand as a, an independent now is because when you stand for a, uh, um, you know, a national party, you're kind of obliged to run with whatever that national party decides with regards to manifestos and the like. And there was a lot of issues that I really couldn't get behind. You know, right. while I, I mean, the reason I'm environmentalist is because I do believe in social and economic sustainability and environmental sustainability. It all makes complete sense. I don't have a problem with any of that. When it starts to get to silly little things, you know, they basically try to cover every single point they could cover in the world, you know, whether it's horse racing, whether it's copyright laws, and it's just like, they threw everything in there, and you're left with a great big manifesto that you you can't get behind all of it, you know, and it's, it just felt uncomfortable to sort of, you, you almost feel a little bit false, and I'm sure members of Labour and Conservatives have these feelings, that there's certain things that they feel really uncomfortable about, that they're obliged to 
to, to stand in front of it and, and to wear on the lapels. We're not like that. We don't have that. It, it's it's not about that. It's all about let go back to the local representation. So that's why I left. It was it just felt no. I couldn't I couldn't be genuine. I couldn't be genuine with it. You know. Okay. Um, if elected, what mm-hmm. will you focus on? I'll be focusing on, like I said, the city centre. That's my big. That's my big passion. The, the city, Newport City Centre is the heart of the, the economy, at the heart of the culture of the city. And, you know, I'm older than you guys. I, I remember the 1980s when Newport was thriving. You didn't have any shops. It was, culturally, it was spectacular. I mean, you, you probably heard, you know, back I in the 90s, it was called yeah. the, the Seattle. The, the, was it the, the Welsh Seattle or something like that? Right. The second Seattle. You know, we had a vibrant cultural life here. We had a vibrant retail life. Um, vibrant city centre, vibrant nightlife. You had everything. Newport was as different as you can imagine to what it is today. And to watch it decline decades and decades with nobody doing anything to stop it is heartbreaking. The simple as that. It's heartbreaking to see it happen. And they're out of ideas. They don't know what to do. So that's what I'm going to be focusing on is how we can start to change this around. You've got retail dying you've got independent retailers can't survive and part of the reason they can't survive is because they're not getting enough people through the door spending money and the reason that people aren't coming through the door is because the streets are so disgusting and there's people hanging around intimidating shoppers so they're not going to come in spend the money in the shops the shops suffer and decline that's right. it's a very simple co- and all of newport's problems are cause and effect and you can you can look at things like transport because at the moment, uh, well, no, probably they're all home now, but the, for the last hour, people have been sat in traffic jams all across Newport. And the, pe- the reason why they're stuck in traffic jams is we don't have a decent transport po- public transport policy. You can't cycle it across Newport if you want to cycle. 30-odd percent of people who buy bikes buy them to commute, right? You can't because of all the 64 cities in the UK, Newport has the third highest rate of private car use for commuting. Okay, so that's higher than London and anywhere else you might right. think of, right? It also has the third highest rate of carbon dioxide emissions per person. Those two statistics, statistics are clearly linked. Right. So, and it's it, it's just cause and effect. So, the parking issues you've got in Baneswell, for instance, is because everyone's driving to come into the city centre because there's no buses or there's no trams or there's no cycling routes, and they park in their cars outside people's houses. And people got, can't park outside their houses. Cause and effect, and it, it, all the way down the line. So when you look at the city centre, the reason why it's dying is because it's not being looked after. They'll they'll spend money on a shopping centre and think it's a silver bullet, and it's not, and the rest of the city d- declines around it. Nobody is going to travel from Cardiff to come to Debenhams in Newport because they've got a bigger one down in Cardiff. Why would you? What's th- The secret of Newport is to... Is, is to Get the independent retail base nice and strong again. So we, there's a reason to come here. So there's lots of different shops and lots of interesting things to see and do. And then the big retailers can come in on the back of that. But to think you're going to get people coming because we've got a next, this is farcical. You don't. It's, it's the clone town mentality. It doesn't work. The most successful towns and cities are the ones that have the highest portion of independent retailers. Right. Okay. So 65% is the national average. We are below that. You know, in Newport, and we, well, last time I looked, we were below that. We need to get those up. So that's my 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 par- partner. I'm standing with, not partner in that you know emotional sense. But the, the guy standing with me, Tom Stanger, he is very much a community. So he's really into the kind of you know the, the community issues, community centres, and, and 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 waste disposal and those things. So we've got that that ward nicely covered in our experience and our passions. So that's where we stand. Right, okay. You've said quite a bit there. Sorry. I'm just listing things in my head. <laughs> okay. Um, I think we're going to talk about the city centre. Okay. Um, obviously, you brought up trafficking. You also brought yep. up um, intimidation, mm-hmm. um, especially with youths. I think probably to tackle quite a few of them at the same time, um, especially with people using um, you know, bikes to get yeah. into the city. Yeah. Um, how, I suppose... With communities first closing, mm-hmm. what would you do to replace that? How would you try and promote youth clubs in the city centre or around? Okay. Like, what, what do you believe is the solution to this? Well, it's to, what, to, to youth? Uh, to, to currently youth being out in the streets and a lot of, I suppose... Antisocial. Uh, well, you, yeah, okay, yeah. antisocial. Well, okay, anti. Yeah, okay. So, so it's a broad question. You've kind of answered it in, in a way yourself that there needs to be more commitment to things like youth centres. Mm-hmm. There needs to be more... But that's something that communities should 
really take a take a hand in themselves. There's no reason why you can't. And you know, you've got community football teams, community sport teams. We need to kind of encourage more of that. Now, how that gets supported by council is the, the council protects parks and things like that. You know, and 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 doesn't lay any obstacles in the way of those kind of organisations taking part. When it comes to the very serious issue of antisocial behaviour in the city centre. Now, we're talking something specifically dif- different there. Now, the reality is, I've been speaking to the police a lot recently, and the real problem they've got is they've lost something like 400 policemen, you know, police officers, sorry. And uh, they've also had to spread where they go. So they are going out to Chepstow now. And, and, you know, it's just the math doesn't work out. Less right. less police officers are broader thing. So it's difficult for them to actually have the presence on the street. Now, the council can't do anything about that. That's all thanks to the Tories up in, up in Westminster cutting in the budgets. Presumably they want to hand over police into G4S in the future. I don't know what it is. But the reality is that where the council can help, and this is where the council will get it wrong, because the council at the moment holds up his hand and go, oh, well, you know, government is cutting budgets and we can't do anything about that. You're all just going to have to suck it up. There's people on the streets and the streets. No, you don't. You work around the problem. You think about how you can affect the environment to make policing easier. And there are things you can do. You've got to kind of question things like, do we really need to, the nightclubs to be open until five o'clock in the morning? Because what that means is that police... Uh, th- th- that kind of minimum amount of police that we've got is now spread thinly throughout that wide area. So the, so the policeman who's working between three and four in the morning, for the benefit of, let's be honest, a handful of businesses in town that benefit from that, can't be out on the streets at three or four in the afternoon tackling the people who are going up and making shoppers' lives. So a lot of the shops around the city centre and a lot of the business around the city centre are being penalised and are paying for the benefit of a few businesses and this ridiculous we we survived for decades probably you know, longer than that with with without having to be open till five in the morning and why it's done is you open till five in the morning handful of businesses great okay but you know and they'll probably not like what i just said you know the handful of businesses will go well you know we, you know we do good business till five in the morning with whoever wants to drink at that time the reality is it's a, it's too much of an expensive price for the rest of the city centre to pay. So we have to think realistically about that. We have to think about the general cost, and that includes how it impacts on things like crime prevention and antisocial behaviour. We've got to make some difficult decisions. We've got to be a bit like New York. We've got to realise, we've got to face up firstly to the fact that this is not the city on the rise that Labour keep telling us and its spin masters keep telling us. That is just something to detract people and to stop people from actually questioning the cosy club that are at the Civic Centre. It's not a city on the rise. It's a city on decline. It has been for many, many, many years. So we can forget that soundbite nonsense. So what we need to do, firstly, is is realise what the state the city's in and actually do something about it. And it might be painful for some people, but it's got to be done for the general good of the Newport City Centre itself and the city as a whole. Do you not feel that... Because uh, this is something I actually asked at the Hustings, and... A lot of uh, a lot of the nightlife is actually stimulated by uh, young people, yeah. a lot of students, and at the moment we currently have a low attainment of students. Yeah. Um, with the University of South Wales not actually offering no. a lot for students, okay. so do you not feel that perhaps if there was a higher attainment of young people actually going into the nightlife, maybe we'd be able to return things like music venues, like yeah, we used to have? Yeah, uh, breaks my heart. I'll say it breaks my heart. You know, I went to university in Newport, and I go back long enough. I can remember things like the Student Union Bar at Emily Street. Which is where the, the, the Newport Centre Leisure Centre is now, you know, and Newport was incredibly well. You guys would have absolutely loved it back in the day. You would have loved it. There was bars, there were clubs, there were bands everywhere, and all that has just kind of evaporated into the mist, and the city is poorer for it. We're all poorer for it. I mean, the loss of the students is a big, big thing. Students had a real vibrancy to to a city or a town or wherever the university is and with them comes a lot of kind of variety in the nightlife at the moment we're very limited with the nightlife if you're over a certain age is you're very limited as what you can do so our evening economy and our nighttime economy is in a pretty poor state to be honest students young people you know we do still have some great venues and we and, and it, recently in the last couple of years it has started to improve a bit better you've got places like your slipping jimmies and you've got uh, the pub around the corner for those so it's all different groups of people and different offers and you need as much of that as you, as you can you really need to in, 
make sure there's something for everyone. You know, so yeah, students would be would be great. Great, and it's, it's gutting to see the student sort of disappearing. Really, yeah. I think with students, um, it's also I, I suppose kind of leading off uh, that one question then, because obviously you talked about nightlife, mm. um, and if there is an improvement to nightlife, maybe it is to come with this question. Um, what exactly would you do to promote Newport to introduce? more enterprise and actually be able to encourage uh, local entrepreneurs um, into the city okay. centre to actually start up businesses. Okay. Uh, okay, well, that comes down to how the council actually supports, and it does do little bits and pieces there and there, but, but the basic bottom line is it's focus more on your big brands. You know, it's in love with this idea of getting the big brands, and it spends vast amounts of money to kind of roll out the red carpet for these. And it doesn't do the same for local businesses at all whether they they are nightclubs or whatever you know it, it just doesn't do it uh if you're speaking specifically about the nightlife i think what you've got to do is you've got to make the environment what, what the council's got to do is make the environment such that it is going to attract businesses they're going to think this that's a nice place to set up a business you've got nice people coming into the town and there's you know streets are clean and you know you can get in nice and easy as a railway station by there fine you know and, and just make it attractive i don't think you can hand hand out any carrots you can't go paying people to come in uh, to start a business up but what you can do is to improve the environment so it's the type of place that you want to and that you know, you can't just rely on an evening economy. You can't just rely on a daytime economy. You've got to have it all working in one. They all roll into each other, you know. I do a lot of work in Bath, you know, but I know, know Bath really well. I work with the Business Improvement District over there and, you know, we speak with the council all the time. And they are really, really good at that whole holistic, everyone working together with a, with an aim of improving everything. And what happens then? You know, you get it. It kind of snowballs. You get a, a willingness to open open business and a willingness equally as important to come in and spend money and visit those businesses because you know they work hand in hand there's no point in opening somewhere if nobody's going to come and, and, and visit it or spend money in it you know so that's what the council needs to do it needs to at the moment they just have this idea that hmm, what can we do perhaps we can throw a bit of money here throw a bit of money there no it's got to be a more holistic approach to improving the whole city centre so that it, it kind of almost happens by itself do you know that people want to come here, want to set up businesses here, want to open a venue by there? You have to make it easy for them, and you don't put things in the way that are going to make it difficult for them. But, you know, make it attractive, make it so they want to come. Mm. If you get elected, is mm. something you want to do work with, is work with uh, other councils and, and collaborate with them? Okay, yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. And I think this is one of the failings historically of Newport Council, and it's whether, you know, without pointing the fingers at any parties because they're equally as as clueless in this is the fact they don't seem to look anywhere else for solutions to problems you know i mean i've worked with other in projects with other councils where they, they've jumped in a on, on a bus and gone over to holland to see how they they manage city center you know uh, traffic management and all that you don't get that you never read about oh there was a party of councillors from newport went up to bristol to see how they developed their cycling routes or whatever it just doesn't happen they're insular they're stuck in the past they don't look outside the boundaries of newport for solutions so yes and we are already as newport independence Park, we have talked about this we're talking about going over and speaking to the guys over in Froome in somerset where there's a very healthy independent council and see how they do so we're already planning this this isn't something we think we might do we're already on the case with this and over the next couple of years that's the important thing i should detract here and say that regardless how this election goes, we're not going away. We're going to be here and we're going to continue to hold this council to uh, to account. We will continue highlighting their failures and their lack of innovation. And we will be doing it by getting off our backsides and actually putting in the miles and the effort to do it. And we are th already thinking about going different places to discuss and look at the solutions that other places have developed for their problems. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think, uh, do you have a question? I do have a question, yeah, alongside what you just said. Why did you choose to join the Newport Independence Party and not run independently as, um, a, a, as an independent good, candidate? Good, okay, well, okay. Well, okay, and this is for anyone out there who is thinking maybe that they're cheesed off with being members of other parties. You're welcome to come and speak to us. Uh, what it, oh, it's my phone. Apologies. <laughs> off. 
<laughs> that is a weird ringtone. <laughs> oh, that's from Star Wars. That's from Star Wars. Oh, I wouldn't know. That was Chris Evans for me. Now. Okay. <laughs> I've forgotten I'm on the radio. He's not listening. Now. Anyway, oh, yeah, the question was... Why did you choose to join okay, Newport Independence you Party and not well, run as an independent of, candidate? Was, you know, I was kind of asked to because, you know, I've, I've, I've always been very open with my political opinions and people know what I think. I'm a very active blogger. I'm a very active... A lot of people know what I think about things and it was a case of, you know, Dave, you know, we've got this idea. Do you want to come along and join us? The, but the advantages of the party, because we got uh, recognised by the Electoral Commission in March, in the March, and it's like, well, why do you form a party? How can you be independent and form a party? But what it is, is you're independent of a whip. You're independent of anyone telling you what to do other than the people you stand for. But on the flip side of that, what we have is we have this kind of brand for one of a better word that we can stand behind we have a support network we have a community which you don't get if you're on your own if you stand on your own it's a very lonely place when i stood funny enough for the greens i felt very on my own i didn't feel like i had the support that you'd expect to have with these guys we're talking every single day we're helping each other out we're actually you know we're a team with friends, you know, and you get that whole support. Now, it's kind of best of both worlds stuck. You get the identity, you get the, you know, okay, this is our logo, this is, you know, I'm great, and what can we do? What do we need to say? What do you, you know, nobody's telling you what to say, nobody tells you what to say, but you'll help each other if you need to formulate your messages, and you, you know, and it's all about that. So there is a real big advantage to this, and it's something that we, you know, we've all thoroughly enjoyed and we've all thoroughly got the benefit from it and, and see how it works. At first, you know, the people did point the fingers, how can you be a party if you're independent? Yeah, we're independent of anyone telling us what to do and that's good enough for me. Okay, so we all wear, we all wear the same colour rosettes, but that's as far as it goes. Mm. Do you know, the, we will disagree undoubtedly on, on, on things, on different issues, but that's the way it should be. People shouldn't be forced to agree on something just because they're a member of a party. That's where the whole system falls apart. That somebody in Ringland for Labour has to vote on something because somebody in a different ward on the other side of the city tells them to. That's nonsense. Absolute nonsense. So, you know, it holds together. It's, it's, it's great being a part of the party. Mm. I'm going to move on now to okay. uh, questions that people have asked on social media. Eek. We've got about... 13 minutes. Okay. Okay. Cool. So brief, good answers. Okay. <laughs> Shotgun round. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how, how do you feel about the status of independent businesses in Newport? You've kind of already answered I that. I kind of have, yeah. I think, okay, to, but to elaborate on that, the status is that they are undervalued. Now, this is an important thing, right? What you get, what you have, it's all about the language that, that the establishment parties use. And they talk about jobs and they celebrate, we've created 50 jobs. Yeah, creating jobs is good, but it pales in significance to creating a career. Now, there's a big difference between a career and a job. A job can be collecting trolleys around a supermarket car park on zero hours, uh, minimum wage. A career where you feel valued and where you feel you've got a career path or where you feel that you're part of the company is far, far better than a job. So we need to stop talking about job creation and start to talk about career creation. And the only way you're going to get career, career creation is if you stop handing over your employment market to the tight to these multinational companies who give nothing except zero hour part time jobs. You need to support the local independent businesses because the local solicitors and the local um, uh, design agency and the local chartered surveyors. That's what you want. You want businesses like that where you, you join them, you get your apprenticeship with them, you build your career and you build, you buy your house on the back of it and the money that you get paid stays with the local economy. So at the moment, the independent businesses are undervalued by the council, and they have been for a long, long time. They've been considered to be a little bit of an inconvenience. Okay. Um, if not successful, mm -hmm. would you be willing to form a ward committee with another candidate uh, to make the ward a better place with I more communication? Okay. And if successful, sorry, Go on. would you endorse a similar group for those not successful? Okay, uh, if I can kind of understand, if I vaguely understand that, it basically boils down to are you prepared to work with other people? Right? Which, yeah. Yeah, okay. Whether you win or not. Whether we're not, uh, yes. Well, we've decided, you know, Tom and I have already vowed that we're going to carry on our work, regardless of what happens tomorrow. We're going to be carrying on working in the ward. We've, we've got certain projects that we're already planning to work on within the community. Um, and 
we're open to working with anyone as long as they can be worked with as long as they leave their party politics nonsense at the door we'll talk to anyone now that doesn't mean going into coalition because i can imagine people are going to see they're going to go in coalition which is nonsense it doesn't work you can't go in coalition simply because we don't have a whip so how that would work is you'd have like say somebody texted yesterday and they say hey you're going to go in coalition with lib dems we've had them all so far they've accused us of going in with the tories going in with labor going in with whatever right it won't work because say for instance that lib dems go okay then form a coalition with us how's that going to work then so you're the lib dem you say right i need your party all to vote yes on this yeah you would have to change your policies well, yeah you? kevin ward will have to go well, I can ask him to, but I, I haven't got a whip. I can't tell him what the hell to do. So the idea of coalition is absolute nonsense. And it's, you know, it just the people who've accused us of going into coalition haven't thought it through. But would we work with different people? Of course we would. Of course we would. Because this is all about getting rid of party politics and all working for the same goal, which is improving the city. And a good idea is a good idea. And somebody who's, who's prepared, uh, prepared to work at it is welcome. We're not the type... We, we don't do that nonsense that... Labour and Conservatives do about oh well we're not doing that idea because it's mm. their idea well, we're not going to agree with that because it's their idea it's, you know I'm really sore then but <laughs> knickers to that that's a load of nonsense we need to start working as a city putting a, putting party politics out the window and starting working together to improve the city yeah I'll, I'll talk to anyone I've got no problem with talking to anyone I find it interesting that you mentioned the Lib Dems, and mm-hmm. it seems that the only trace of the Lib Dems in the city is the leaflets they put through oh, my door. Yeah. I know. Well, <laughs> I not. I actually ran over the city to try and find. I just got a phone call. Got a phone call <laughs> saying, oh, I just saw some Lib Dems are walking down the street. All right, I'm going to run over that side of the no. city. All you see is well, leaflets in the streets. We're doing them a favour by having a rosette look. Which looks a little bit like a. You know, so we're doing All right. <laughs> yeah, I. I they were the only party I couldn't get hold of. Oh, were they? Yeah. I know, they've oh, kind of evaporated. They've kind of evaporated. A lot of people have seen it, yeah, not just in Newport, but No, yeah, no, I, know. I, got a, I know. I got a magazine through uh, by them, actually, called Victoria Magazine. I was looking through it, and I was just like... <laughs> it's just leaflet after leaflet after leaflet. <laughs> I, I never have seen them, though. <laughs> no, no. Um, if elected, mm-hmm. how will Newport Independents pay for all the promises they've made with a decreasing council budget? How many teachers, social workers, care assistants and so on are they going to make redundant to pay for their manifesto claims? There is no new money and we'll have much less in the years ahead. Indeed, we will have much less in the years ahead. But that does not mean that you have to do what the establishment parties do is hold up your hands and go, well, okay. you've got to work around the problem. If this was a business and your head office say, okay, we've got, to, we've got to kind of, you know, budget, you know, budget the less to do whatever we develop our business, you work around it. And that's where they're getting it wrong. People are thinking, oh, well, less money, cut everything. No, you work around it. You work around the problems. You work different ways of doing things. You make things more efficient and more effective it doesn't mean you suddenly have to go sacking people or laying people off and doing whatever it is or cutting their service think of different ways work together liaise with people negotiate with people the service suppliers that we get newport city council is incredibly powerful but it does not realize it's powerful so when it deals with its service providers it has the power to negotiate it also has the power to say when when there's a bit of land there's the other thing you've got to stop building houses because half of the problems we got in the city is the fact that building houses on every single spit acre of land that's gone but newport city council doesn't go oh, whoa, 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 whoa. no we're not going to let you build 400 houses there we'll let you build 300 but you also got to do something for the community to make life a bit easier for the people who can't get into schools or for the people who can't get into the doctors or for the traffic that you new housing newport city council is, needs to develop that kind of attitude that it needs to start demanding stuff off the people who want to do business with it it needs to negotiate more and that's that's one of the the main cultural problems with the city council for decades now it doesn't do it other cities do it other cities say okay then there's three housing companies want to build houses on this land well what we'll do is we'll we'll put out the tender which one of you is going to make our life easier which one of you is going to put more back into the community that's what this council needs to start doing needs to start thinking about needs to negotiate more needs to be more hard nosed to get more for the reduced money they're getting Hmm. Uh, last question okay. are independent candidates just UKIP or Labour or Tory in disguise <laughs> That's, great one, That's the best one we've had that thrown at us all the time. Tories in disguise was the first one, and then uh, somebody on on the Twitter feed. What do people mean by that then? Well, I don't know. I think it's just a way of trying to sort of. We have really 
upset the apple cart. They're not happy with us. They really don't like us coming along because what it means is they've had to get off their backsides and match us with the amount of being on the street door knocking they've had to kind of match us with the fact that we're putting out so many messages and we're on social media we've really upset them their kind of cozy attitude to campaigning and to running the city has been called into question has been turned up and down so the only thing they can do is to try and sort of snipe at us not one attack has stuck they've called us tories they've called us ukip they've called us labor in disguise they've called us everything it's a load of nonsense none of it's stuck and none of it will stuck they can keep caught they can keep saying whatever they like we're normal everyday people residents of the city who love this city that's all we are you can call us whatever names it's not going to work one question I've got before we finish, we've got a few minutes left. Um, you mentioned the whip of yeah. Labour and, and other parties. Yeah. Doesn't it work the other way, where if you have uh, people with different ideas, yeah. so Independence Party, yeah. uh, coming together, would it be harder to make a decision if you've all got different sure. ideas? Well, well that's actually, I've got something to add on to okay. that, actually, because it's a bit like um, the UKIP we get, uh, guess we add on. Mm. And it, is, it seems to be a bit like UKIP, where they don't actually have a whip, mm. so therefore they're not actually, they don't have any goals i suppose no, no, they, there's, yes, there's, there's yes, nothing yes. set in mind so what actually holds you to an account mm -hmm. if you don't have that structure there well i suppose what you do is you turn that question upside down so you say how can you come to a decision if you're all got different viewpoints and you're all representing your wards and putting your wards first well they are you know to spin that question on his head should we be coming should we be all agreeing on the wrong decision for certain wards yeah so, for instance, if, if the council goes, I tell you what, we're going to do, this is how we're going to do bins, okay? You're, and and you all agree. And yet some places like Baneswell, well, that bin system doesn't work. We've all got to stick them in the, in the middle of the street, you know, on the pavements. It doesn't work. So it's not about agree. It's not about how will you agree. It's about whether or not you agree to the wrong things. Do you know what I mean? Because just because you all agree doesn't mean it's the right solution. So yeah, you keep bickering and you keep, and you, you, you work at, maybe that one thing that you're all being asked to agree on doesn't need to be agreed on. Maybe what needs to be agreed on is separate individual little solutions to whatever that question is. So that, you know, I mean, there will be things obviously that you do need to agree on as a whole. And you, it's a democracy. It's not about one or two people telling everyone else how to, how to act or how to vote or what to agree on. It's a democracy. Every single person in the city has a viewpoint that needs to be listened to. And every single representative of those people who live in Newport need to need to reflect that within the chambers of power you know so uh, the question is kind of valid but academic at the same time if you like mm. any more questions Al no I'm pretty satisfied okay. <laughs> um, I suppose uh, what is Newport to you because we've we've heard a lot of politicians slip up and say um, or candidates sorry okay. say that um, it's a town not a city yeah what do you think Oh, okay. Whether I okay, okay. How do you see Newport at the moment? How do I see Newport at the moment? Well, it's just, it is legally a city, and I will call it a legally a city. Okay. However, I'm an old old fella, so I remember this <laughs> town. So occasionally you do slip up and say, "Hey, right. so we're going to town tonight." But yes, it's a city, and we need to think like a city. And just okay. because we haven't got skyscrapers, we are a city. We need to. What, what we're going to do is think: What do we want to be? And mm. we've got to work towards what we want to be. And we want to be a city, and we want to be a proud and successful city. Okay. Well, David. Thanks for coming on. Okay, it was a show. pleasure. Thank you very much for having me.